Hi everyone, I've gotten so fed up over the last, like, month or two of dealing with people who have absolutely zero clue what they're doing in Salmon Run, so today I've put together 25 tips of how you can improve your Salmon Run gameplay. But real quick before we start, I'm trying to hit 25,000 subscribers before 2023, so if you could help me out if you like this content, then definitely click that subscribe button. It would really much help me get to my goal. Okay, video time. Number one, hold the roller down to splat lots of chum really easily in mud mouths. I would say this to do in gullow flies, but really it does not work as well as you would think, but it's a really nice way to help your teammates get bombs into the mud mouth's mouth if someone with a roller can hold down and just splat the chum as they come. You just tilt up a little bit and you move like ever so slightly. Number two, when playing glow flies, if you can find a really high incline to get up to, you can hide just on the edge of it to where the chum can't get you and if your teammates are aware of what you're doing, they can then go and splat all the chum and the two glow flies that'll come at you as they come without any risk to yourself or your teammates. Number three, shoot grounded boxes on motherships. You may think if you're new that they serve no purpose since you can't get a golden egg from them anymore, but you're going to have a much harder time going for boxes that are in the air if you're getting swarmed by ads all the time. Number four, listen for audio cues at the end of a wave for a King Salmonid. So new people don't really know this as much as old people do, but there are some slight differences in the audio that plays after you finish the final round, and even if your salmon meter isn't up all the way, there could be someone else you're matched with that is ready to face a King Salmonid. These are what the different audios sound like. The more distorted one is for the King Salmonid to show up. Number five, the blue box on fly fish is for ranged missiles and the red box is for short range. Bomb the blue first to help your teammates more and then go for the red so you can defend yourself. Number six, if you've been splatted, the best thing you can do is move towards your teammates. There are way too many people that don't understand this like, how are we supposed to revive you if you're on the other side of the map? Number seven, this is really a, like, rare occasional use thing because it has to be in rotation, but the Explosher can be used to break fly fish boxes and can substitute bombs for mud mouths. If you have the opportunity to use it, then use it. Number eight, allow more mobile bosses like Maws, Scrappers, and Goldies to get close to the egg basket. Their mobility can make your time better spent on bosses like Flyfish and Stingers. Number 9, inking walls is not only not a sin, but it is recommended for you to do. You're not going for points in Salmon Run, so you might as well ink the walls to give you a better leverage point or another escape route in case you're getting swarmed. Number 10, let Slammin' Lids get a lot of ads underneath them before letting them fall down. It'll splat all of the ads. But if the Salaminid just spawned and you have the opportunity to take them down before anything that comes out, that would be even more optimal. Number 11, always stick by someone if not your whole team in glow flies. Even though you've got some rando running away from you, follow them. As soon as one of your teammates goes down, your odds of wiping just significantly went up. Number 12, if someone's spamming this way in Salmon Run, the spamming is most likely much more important than say, someone spamming in Turf War and can often mean your teammate needs help. Number 13, golden eggs in King Salmonid fights aren't just for the king. You can also use them to one-shot bosses like Flyfish or take off most of another boss's health. If you're surrounded, use those walls that you painted from that earlier tip to hide until you've recovered. Obviously, the Salmonids will still know where you are, but you'll be a lot healthier and have more ink. Number 15, the big shot launcher should only be used if you've got a teammate by the egg basket or if the egg basket is the next place you're going as soon as you're done using it. If not, then all of your hard work getting eggs near the egg basket will be for nothing and you'll lose a ton of eggs. Number 16, stingers, flyfish, and big shots are the most annoying enemies to deal with. Target them first, even if there's something like a moz or a scrapper right in front of you. Number 17, this is very important, don't be afraid to use a special in wave 1. All of your teammates have two specials as well and you have those specials to use in case you need them. Don't throw a game because you want to save your specials for round 2 and 3. Number 18, you've got one special if you run out right before the King Salmonid fight. Please, I beg you, remember this because there are too many people that don't. Number 19, take time to learn about how you should be using the weapon you're given. Most of them have a totally different use than they do in like ranked or turf. For example, with Splat and Dynamo Roller, rolling is much more 
important here than it is over there. Number 20, never panic special when you're surrounded unless you are the last person alive on your team and you're getting swarmed. The odds of a panic special failing and you getting splatted are very high. In normal cases, it's better to die and not risk wasting the special, but if you've got something like the reef slider, your odds of surviving got a little bit higher, though death is still possible when you're getting on the shark. Though you should try and avoid panic specialing, the reef slider is, in my opinion, better for panic specialing than something like the booyah bomb or the inkjet. Number 21, if you don't like the weapon rotation in Salmon Run at the time, don't play it. I lost my executive VP rank because I wanted to play and keep playing, but all the weapons were ones that I wasn't really good at, and in the end, I regretted playing because I lost my rank. There's a lot of other things to do in Splatoon 3, and if you don't like the Salmon Run rotation, of course, if you're willing to learn at the cost of your rank, then disregard. But for those chasing the fabled hazard level max, maybe your time would be best spent researching the weapon's uses that you're less familiar with in Salmon Run. 22. If you're at a high rate of fire weapon, support your slower fire rate teammates by getting the adds off of them. Here's a little Grizzco weapon rundown. Fighting Kohozuna with a Grizzco stringer? Don't even go for eggs, just straight up spamming with shots. Your time will be better spent over there. Grizzco Slosher can break through flyfish armor, so if you have it, attack the small fry in the middle. This applies to scrappers too. If you have the Grisco Blaster, as long as you're watching your ink, don't be afraid to just get up in enemy's faces. Grisco Charger is essentially the same thing but with a little more social distancing. Number 24, if there's someone also trying to go onto a fish stick that you got to first, let the rando take the fish stick. Odds are they're tunnel visioned on it and it's not worth wasting two players time on one boss unless it's a fly fish. Last, but most certainly not least, the most important thing you can do for your team is literally just don't die. Avoid the situation of needing a revive in general. Know your strengths and weaknesses and don't try to push yourself too far beyond your limits. You've got teammates to help you with that. Splatoon isn't about being a one-man army, it's a very team-focused game, and if you overpush yourself and get splatted, you've made your teammates' responsibility to babysit you much higher, and you end up being a disadvantage to have on your team. So there you go. If you implement all of these 25 tips, you will be a much better teammate and overall a better Salmon Run player than you were before you watched this video. Please, I beg you, go out and do some research on the weapons you guys use, because there are way too many people that play like they're playing in a turf war. I mean, that's good to do at like the beginning of the match, probably should have included this. Like, uh, always take your extra time between rounds to paint around where you spawn and try to get as much of the map as possible. Totally forgot about that one, that's on me. But if there's definitely one thing to take away from this video, Overall, be aware of your teammates. Honestly, that's probably the most important thing because of how team focused this game is. But anyways, that's it for me. Let me know any opinions you'd like to share on how to get better at Salmon Run in the comments below. Maybe we can help some new players and there will be less of whatever is going on in Professional 3 and like lower level executive right now because oh my lord, it's a nightmare. All right gamers, that's it for me. See ya.